Look at this very rare occurrence. Look at the cuteness together in one bed. They're both attracted to new sheets. Oh, <laughs> oh buddy. Buddy, that was not nice. That was not nice. It's a good thing Eleanor is not trying to kick your ass. She is an amazing huntress. And she can be quite vicious. <gasps> oh, you startled me, honey. Oh, you are so sweet. Have a good nap, honey. I love you. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Oh, I hit you on the nose. <laughs> you vicious little kitty. It's a little wire with a big piece of fur on it. She loves it. Let go of it. It's not playing if you keep it. Let go of it. Gimme. Nothing? We're done? I think we're tired of this toy. And for Buddy, it is a stick under the sheet that he had, oh, and sometimes when it's not under the sheet. <laughs> All right, he, they like high-tech toys, as you can see. Nothing battery-operated or anything that makes noise. A stick under a sheet is plenty. I guess we're not. We're done. All right. Look at him. <laughs> He's just like, let me insinuate myself in a place. Oh, all right. Let me give you a little love. He's like, how can I make this more difficult for you? <laughs> but look at that face. I love you, honey. I love you. Your bright te cle clean teeth. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. You have nice, clean, shiny teeth. Can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? Am I gonna, can I borrow that? All right, thank you, honey. Hey guys, how are ya? Boom, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. I think you've seen me in a swimming pool like three times in the years that I filmed my channel. I don't have a body that's really designed to be on a YouTube channel unless it's a nature film and it's about like a sea line being pushed back in the water. But, um, so, hey, how are ya? So it is two and a half years that I've been in my condo, I think about two and a half years. Uh, I bought it during COVID. It was the middle of the COVID epidemic. It was 2021, January. And um, of course the pool area was closed. They didn't reopen it until I think this past spring. Uh, they kept it closed for a very long time. Uh, and my HOA pays for it. It was just too hot to get in the pool most of the summer. Hot because the water is unpleasant. It's like hot bath water. And then, you know, the sun is out to kill you. So I don't get in the pool at all in the summertime. But I figured finally, I'm going to get in the pool. Uh, it's August 5th, about 730. It's about 104 right now. Relatively normal, if not cooling off. Uh, the water feels like, you know when you're in a bathtub and you took a hot bath and it's cooled down enough that you realize, you know, I should add some more hot water. That's exactly what the pool feels like right now. It's not really refreshing, but it's pleasant. It just feels nice to be in the water, you know. Um, I think ideal, the ideal time to be in this pool will be mid to late September, all of October. So I look forward to spending some time out here. Um, it's perfect when the sun isn't shining. So yeah, I'm just going to hang out in the pool for a bit. This is my pool area here. Um, I have never in the years I've lived here seen anybody in this pool. I've never seen one person in the pool. So, um, yay. <laughs> yay for me. So I will see you guys later. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be part of a video, but I figured I'd film it just in case, but uh, I'll see it in a minute. Whatever happens. I think it's time to get out. It's about quarter past eight and I'm getting all wrinkly. You guys out here. Hey there, good afternoon or 
Good evening, or I should say it's 7.15 in the evening here in Las Vegas. My car says it's 112 degrees. Google says it's 108. Help. Oh my God, I am so tired of this heat. <gasps> it's a lot. I don't mind the, the heat, but you know, I think the, 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 the problem is that usually with my job, I get away from Las Vegas often enough that I've been here in Vegas for like a week and a half without any release from this heat other than being in my amazing air-conditioned condo. Um, but uh, the heat really does get to here in Las Vegas. I don't know how outside workers do it, but it's a lot. It's a lot. But um, so last night, I really wish I had filmed it. I just didn't think I was actually going to cook. Some of you really enjoy watching me cook. It's been a long time, but um, I made dinner last night, which is really kind of a surprise to me because my condo is, it's a mess. I don't admit it often because it's just embarrassing. Who likes, to, who, who admits to having a dirty house? Like my place isn't dirty, it's just messy. I've got piles of stuff everywhere. Things I have to list on eBay, just bags I have to put away somewhere, shoes everywhere. It looks like my bedroom looked when I was a teenager, which is really embarrassing. But my kitchen has just been a mess. And I walk in the kitchen, and I'm so disheartened. I'm like, Ugh. Nah, let's go to Panda. <laughs> and then, then the next day, I'm like, oh, forget it. I think it's Taco Bell tonight. And so I just have been cooking. Well, the past couple of days, spending so much time at home, I've been chipping away at the mess. And it's been so freeing. It's been liber liberating. I don't enjoy it but I enjoy the end result. So I've been cleaning and my kitchen looks like an adult's kitchen now. It's so nice. Uh, so last night, tried to cook dinner. How is this turning into such a tangent? You're so patient with me. Um, so I decided to cook dinner last night, but I had nothing in the house. I had some cheese ravioli, which I always have in the fridge because it's yummy, it's filling, it's cheap. Um, and, but I had no tomato sauce. Usually I buy whatever jar is on sale. Uh, but I did have some little grape tomatoes that were getting kind of wrinkly, like they're at the end. I had some garlic that really wanted to be more of a potted plant <laughs> than dinner because it had really sprouted quite a bit. So it was, wasn't at its best, but I used it up. I had some garlic and uh, some olive oil and some crushed red pepper seeds and some, I had some parm, um, uh, ch uh, you know, shake that cheap, ch shaken, dry, powdery parm. Uh, and what else did I use? Uh, some butter. And I made a little sauce out of that stuff and uh, that trash, really. Uh, and I put it over some cheese ravioli. And, oh, it was so good. It was so good. I really enjoy it, too. So, yay for being an adult, just a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that was really nice. And then uh, I went to go to bed. But, you know, the cats got, got me up. I gave them some treats. I pulled out my laptop and I, I meant to just do a couple things online and poke, poke, poke. We all know what I mean when I mean to go to bed, but I never do. Um, I started playing a video game, Skyrim, which I've been playing for 12 years. It's been out for 12 years and I can still play it for six hours at a time. Uh, the only thing that stops me is Buddy, my cat Buddy, at a certain point when he is tired and he wants to go to bed, he makes this one particular yowl. Yow, dad, let's go to bed now. Shut that computer off. That's what he says to me. So, and he does, and like I know what he means. So my cat finally yelled at me enough where I was like, fine, we'll go to bed. It was like quarter of two, <gasps> the poor thing. Um, but um, I meant to wake up this morning, early, 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 6 a.m., to go to a 7 a.m. recovery meeting. There's a, a, a um, clubhouse not two miles from my house. And every morning, every day of the week, they have a 7 a.m. meeting. And I haven't been. I've lived here for two and a half years. I love a early morning meeting because no one goes to a 7 a.m. recovery meeting to be cute. Like, no one's there to show off their new shoes or, you know, be fun, whatever. You go there to stay sober, to get sober, to help someone else stay sober, like to do the work uh, at 7 a.m. You're not there for kicks, you know? So I meant to go this morning, but I was up so late playing video games. So um, I did not go. I'm meaning to go tomorrow morning though. That's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set myself a promise to myself. 
Uh, so I hung around the house today, just kind of farted around. Uh, and then, um, ka-ching, ka-ching, on my cell phone, an eBay sale. Uh, so I looked it up. It was a little thimble with uh, Tinkerbell on it. It was a crystal uh, Tinkerbell thimble. Say that three times fast. So I sold it for $25. Someone bought it for $25. I have a sneaking suspicion some of you guys are buying things from me on eBay. Because I haven't had sales for a little while. And then all of a sudden, bing, 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 some sales. So I've been more, uh, and I'm a little uncomfortable with, with some of you guys buying stuff for me on eBay. Uh, one of my favorite subscribers, Adira, I love her. She's always so kind. Um, she's purchased two things from me and two times those items arrived shattered in their boxes. The post office like stepped on the packaging. So I'm just awkward uh, selling stuff to, to subscribers, but um, I suspect some of you are buying stuff, but uh, I sold this little thimble and I packed it up, got it all ready to go, wrote a thank you note, and then I forgot to put the thank you note in the box. Um, scooted off to the post office and they're closed. It's Sunday. What am I doing? Um, what am I doing? It's like six and a half minutes of me. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're used to it, right? So I just fired around town, just drove around for a bit, hit McDonald's. Um, and I could have filmed any of this and it would have been much more entertaining than my monologue. But I grabbed a um, Doc Dr. Pepper and a cone. So they're, they're 99 cents each. So had a little treat, stopped over at um, Savers. Not to do any shopping per se, but research. Everything is half off tomorrow. Uh, on Mondays here in Las Vegas, Savers, everything is half off. So what I do is I walk in there later in the day and I film things that I want to buy. I take the pictures of things I want to buy so I know where they are. I don't have to screw around when I get in there. I can get the cart, race over to what I want, grab it, put it in the cart and not have to like fight the crowds. Or was it still there, you know? So I walked in. The only thing that I was not willing to buy today were a set of glasses from Pier 1 Imports. Do you remember Pier 1 Imports? Um, they were six Kayla glasses. Someone recently in the last month or so bought six Kayla um, Pier 1 drinking glasses for $129. And there are no more listed that I know of on eBay. So I'm going to come back tomorrow and pick up those glasses. They would have cost me like 10 bucks today, but I'd rather spend five than 10 so I'm going to race over here tomorrow after my meeting. But there were a couple things that I could not leave behind. Some for resale, one for me. Um, I, I hesitate shopping right now because psychologically, spiritually, physically, I'm still recoiling from having to spend so much money on my air conditioner. But I figure if I sell some of these things, I'm going to make 10 times what I spend. So it's it's sort of an income, right? So I'm trying to rationalize my purchases. So I bought two hats. They're almost identical. They're almost identical. I love this brand. It's called Black Clover. Um, I love this ball cap. Uh, you know those guys who wear Under Armour hell, uh, caps? Like they have 50 different color Under Armour cap. Like it's a very popular cap. Well, this is like my favorite ball cap. It doesn't look too bad on me. It's so comfortable. This is the logo. I probably already have this hat. I don't know what color I have it in, but maybe it's probably this one. Uh, but it was $4. Ta-da! It has this Velcro back. Not my favorite type of back. My favorite type of backing is that one where it's just solid. And this one, four bucks. So I bought two of them. This one, the one that's kind of dirty, I'm gonna leave in the car so I don't forget to bring it into the car. So I actually wear it. This one I'll leave in the closet. But uh, I could not leave these behind. They would be snatched up by somebody uh, tomorrow morning. So I grabbed those. I also grabbed this. It didn't have a price tag on it, so they weren't gonna sell it to me tomorrow. So I asked about it tonight, and um, they gave me a good price. Does anyone know what this is? Do you know what this is? Anybody? Bueller, Bueller. It's a pillar 
candle holder. So you put a pillar candle on here. And I recognize the quality of the glass right away and the finish of it. And I picked it up and the sticker in the back is for the most part gone, but I kind of recognize some of the writing. And it's by Viking, which is a uh, glass company out of West Virginia. West Virginia, I want to go there one day. Uh, a lot of amazing glass is manufactured in West Virginia. Blanco, uh, Blanco glass, still in production, um, but still collectible, is made in West Virginia. Viking, I believe, was made in West Virginia. And I did a little uh, Google search, Google images and eBay searches and uh, Etsy, and could not find one of these uh, anywhere. And uh, Viking is collectible. Uh, because it's no longer made. Um, so I, I bought it, it was 250. So I'll sell it, even if I make 20 bucks off of it, I don't know, but um, I love it and I will resell that. And the last thing I bought, I could not let it sit there because someone was gonna grab it before I did. Um, it is, ta-da, it's an ugly sweater. Now I don't buy clothes very often. Look at this, a 12 minute long monologue. You guys are so patient. Um, it's a sweater from Norway. It was, it's by Dales of Norway. It's a, it's a large size 52, which is kind of like a 42 if you're talking about American sizing. So I'm a 44, uh, in terms of a jacket size or a sweater size, but this is a four, um, 52, which is really a 42 here in the U S but it is, um, a really cool Norwegian wool sweater with these cool, metal clasps uh it kind of gives you um you know um um the sound of music vibes <laughs> and it's got this cool sleeve detail it's not cool it was five dollars it was five dollars now they uh, they've sold for really really great money they've sold for okay money but they always sell on ebay so i don't buy clothes often because sometimes clothes sit there forever and ever and ever but i think this coming autumn i think this will sell pretty pretty quickly it's it's a big sweater so it's going to be for a kind of a, a curvy girl or a guy who's just a little bit slimmer than i am but uh blah 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 so i have just talked your ear off about absolutely nothing uh, but um, yeah, there you go. This is my typical video. I am gonna head home I'm gonna make some dinner and I'm probably gonna go back to the pool and hang out for a little while and Then hope to uh, go to bed early enough where I can go to that 7 a.m. Meeting so now that I've said it to you Maybe I'll have I'll feel guilty if I don't go so that's the goal. So I will see you maybe tomorrow All right. See you soon So I was gonna head home and then I saw the new um, building, the new sphere that they built, and I figured I'd show it to you. I'm just driving up on it now. Uh, do you see that brightly lit thing there? It's literally a sphere. Uh, it's uh, perfectly round, and you can kind of see through it where the, the opaque part in the middle is where they're having like a, a it's a, sort of where they're going to have concerts and different different things but the outside of it is made up of little led lights the whole thing is covered in different lights and um it's not terribly dramatic right now but uh i figured i'd show it to you there is the link which is the ferris wheel on the left and then up ahead you see the um this, I think it's called the Sphere. It cost two billion dollars to build. Isn't that insane? I'm gonna get a little closer to see if I can find uh, catch a, a better image. That is so cool. All right, that's a cool image. Look at that. It's the Earth rotating. I can get this. Isn't that cool? It's the, the a globe. And some of the images are of fireworks. Uh, one of the images is of a giant eyeball with like the iris and you can see eyelashes and I think it blinks and everything. But um, that is the 
a globe of the Earth from daylight on the left to nighttime on the right with all the lights of the cities and things shining. Isn't that wild? Two billion dollars it took to build this thing. Craziness. But cool, admittedly very cool. Okay, so I meant to take a turn and I forgot to, but I am driving up on the stratosphere, which is um, now called the strat. If you look real close, you'll see there's something moving up and down there on the top of that little spire there. Yeah, that's a ride. There are people up there screaming. Uh, <laughs> there's rides up there. You can ride that thing up and down. Uh, or you can jump from the top. You can literally skydive from that. You can jump. You're, like, you're in a harness or a suit or something, and they have you on a wire, and you literally just jump. That thing is like 1,100 feet high. Uh, and then there's another ride where you can uh, get in. It's like a roller coaster car, but it just drives off the side of the top and stops and then comes back up. And I think it, like, threatens to drop you off the edge two or three times. I'm never doing any of those rides uh, ever, uh, but uh, I'm thinking of going up there. I haven't been up to the top of the Strat in six years, uh, maybe maybe longer. It was actually, I think it was after Thanksgiving 2017. So I was on a date. It was my last date. That was the last date I've been on. What does that say about me? My last date with a guy and not a cat was uh, just after Thanksgiving 2017. I'm hopeless. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking of going up there again. It's, it, it was fun, it was fun. Um, maybe I'll do that before I go back to work. I'll take you along with me if I do. Good morning, guys. Hi, it is 6.45 a.m. I was hoping to stop and get some coffee this morning, but uh, there's usually coffee at meetings, especially morning meetings. The sun is brutal already, but it's it's a cool 89 degrees. <laughs> it's supposed to be up to 108, but uh, yeah, I'm going to swing a left on Flamingo here. I'm on Easter now. Head to the meeting and then uh, maybe get some coffee afterwards, maybe a bite to eat, and then I'm going to hustle over to Saver, see if I can find those glasses I had uh, taken pictures of, and then probably go home and take a nap. I am so used to sleeping as long as I want to that, like, waking up at this hour is, oh, brutal, brutal. Uh, so I will see you later. I gotta somehow get to, to the right of this car here. I'll see you later. Ooh. Well, that was a fantastic meeting. It is 8.10 in the morning. Uh, I had looked at the schedule for this meeting and I thought it was a meditation meeting, a step 11 meditation meeting, which sounded interesting, which is one more reason I went. Uh, but um, it was a reading. It was actually a big book meeting. Uh, we read a part of a story called, It Could Always Be Worse, or It Could Always Get Worse, something like that. Uh, really fantastic, fantastic um, reading. But the meeting itself was fantastic. The guy across from me, Mike, he was celebrating 47 years of sobriety, which is amazing. He was a submariner in World War II. And um, he had amazing stories. And I got to share a little bit. One of the things um, I'm most proud of in terms, I'm spitting all over the place, is um, just to be a little more humble here, is to um, the fact that in meetings, when I first got sober, I was always the first person to have my hand. I want to talk, I want to talk. Whatever I have to say is terribly important. And, you know, years later, I, I the meeting opens and for people to share or talk. And I kind of just wait for a bit, wait for somebody else to start talking first, because whatever they're going to say is usually more interesting and probably more helpful than whatever I have to say. So later on, after enough people have had a share or there's been a long pregnant pause before the next person, then I'll open, you know, raise my hand and say hi. Um, and I talked about um, when I first realized I was going to have to live or die. Uh, and um, and when my ch my choice was death. My choice was, if you know my story, 
uh, you know what I was what I was planning on doing. What really ended up happening was me ending up in a psych ward, you know. Um, but um, I talked a little bit about that moment of not wanting to live or die and being afraid of both. <gasps> Man, really good meeting. It jogged a whole bunch of uh, memories. And they got to talk, the chance to talk about um, one of the promises the recovery program has for me is the fear of financial insecurity. It doesn't mean I'm not afraid or that I will be broke <laughs> or have more bills than I'm comfortable with. Uh, but the, the fact that I'm not going to be afraid of financial issues, you know. I just handle them as I have to, and and it's a real it's a real gift. Um, but blah blah blah. So I'm in line at Dunkin' Donuts. I need to get a coffee. I was gonna get a breakfast sandwich, but the breakfast sandwich and a coffee would set me back like twelve bucks, thirteen dollars. When did that happen? Uh, so I'm getting a, a a coffee and getting a plain donut because I love an old fashioned donut. Just enough in my, in my belly to get me to Savers so I can buy those glasses I was talking about. Um, and then I'll head home and I'll make some eggs or something for breakfast. Give the cat some extra treats and then I'm going to take a nap. Because I'm not supposed to be up at this hour. Uh, and then I have to go to the post office and drop off that little thimble that's sold. And hopefully later on... Uh, list some items to sell. Oh, I'm next in line. So excited. I will see you later. So I made it into Savers. These are the glasses. Uh, they don't look like much, but they're very pretty in person. They shimmer. They're really pretty. They almost look like they're made out of crystal because it's very, very clear glass. Very pretty. Uh, four of them are for $5 and two of them are for $2.50. So um, yeah, half of that I'll take it, thank you very much. Um, I will probably list them on eBay. I'm tempted to keep them for myself because I don't have drinking glasses. I know, I have lots of coffee mugs. I don't have drinking glasses, mostly because I drink out of bottles. I'm single, I live alone, who cares, right? So I might keep them, I think they're very pretty, but I also might list them on eBay because they're beautiful and they might sell. So um, I have walked around, I picked up a whole bunch of other stuff, I put it all back because it wasn't really worth it. Uh, and now I'm in books, which is always dangerous, uh, and CDs. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to walk out of here with just these glasses. I've successfully avoided buying books, but I'm buying a Barry White CD. Love Barry White. Mariah, number ones. Steve, uh, Stevie Wonder, Conversations, Peace. Um, Rhythm Nation, Janet Jackson, come on, hello. And Lisa Stansfield, <laughs> I love Lisa Stansfield. So I like, I have a CD player in my car and I just like to throw a CD in the, in the uh, player once in a while. And these are some things I haven't listened to in a long time or I don't own already. Uh, but you know, for one, two, three, four, five bucks, I'll take them. Alrighty, so I spent $9.68. I got uh, five CDs to throw in the car and just, you know, pop in and listen to. Uh, and a set of six beautiful drinking glasses that I'll really enjoy or I'll list for a profit. Um, a breakfast sandwich and an iced coffee at Dunkin's would cost me $12 and change. And to, where's my car? Oh, there it is. Um, I'm going to uh, save that money and go home and eat at home and uh, cuddle with the cats and take a nap. I think this is technically a champagne flute, but this is a piece of St. Louis, you can see the sticker there, stemware. Uh, and I just sold this today for $59, uh, which is priced pretty reasonably. This stuff is hysterically expensive. If you're ever just interested in crystal in general, go on YouTube and look for um, why is St. Louis crystal so expensive or something. The work involved in just making this one piece of stemware is ridiculous. And something else that sold while I was sleeping, uh, this little bottle. This is an oddly collectible bottle. I saw it in the store and I was like, mm, that's something. I don't know 
what, but it's something. So I had to do a little research. It's apparently surprisingly collectible. Uh, but um, yeah, there you go. So I'm going to drop this in the mail. I think this sold for 30 Five or 32 or 38 or something like that but I have to get this in the mail today as well hey guys how are you good afternoon it is 321 here in Las Vegas it has been a fantastic day oh my gosh a combination of me just being relaxed not having to work for a little bit you know I woke up and started the day on, on a great note with a good meeting. Um, went to Savers, bought those fantastic glasses, which again, I'm tempted to keep, but I might list. Uh, and then um, I took a nice long nap. Oh, I had made myself breakfast, some scrambled eggs and toast. Someone out there is like, you should have filmed making your scrambled eggs. I'm not that person. Uh, and my videos are already tedious enough. They're already long enough with me talking, 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 talking. You don't want to see video clips of me making coffee. Why do so many YouTubers film themselves making coffee in the morning? I just don't get it. Okay. Um, but uh, no judgment, but I'm judging. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Um, had a nap with the cats. That was glorious. Uh, buddy jumped up and crawled right into the nook of my arm here and fell asleep with his head on my wrist. <gasps> if I could have moved to get my camera, I would have. But uh, and then Eleanor uh, hung out by my, my by my feet, so I was just like embraced with kitties. <laughs> had a nice hour and a half nap, just a really good nap. And then while I was sleeping, I had those two additional eBay sales. Uh, so um, yeah, a really really nice day, it's a fantastic day. Um, eBay sales. I am almost positive now that some of you guys are buying stuff for me on eBay. I'm almost positive. And it does make me feel a little uncomfortable. It's just shy of you sending me money. Um, but uh, the, the part that makes me anxious is I've sold hundreds of items on eBay. Hundreds. And I've shipped them out, all of them, with zero problems, zero issues. That's a lie. My first sale um, was never delivered and I had to refund them. It was a pair of salt and pepper shakers from Jonathan Adler that I wish I kept. But uh, since then, I've shipped out hundreds of items. Only twice have packages arrived damaged with goods broken and twice to the same person. One of my subscribers, of course, Idira, one of my favorite people on YouTube. Uh, and uh, both times, her packages arrived with some broken items inside, like shattered. I don't know what's going on at her post office, but they're doing jujitsu with the boxes. Um, but out of the hundreds of things I've shipped out, everything has arrived safely and timely. Just having those two issues with Idira's packages have kind of made me anxious. If someone I know and care about, like one of my subscribers, purchases something, I'm a little freaked out. So I'm, uh, yeah. So what else, what else? I think that's it so far. It's been a fantastic day. The traffic is a little scary right now because I think school started yesterday. Um, so I was tempted to go to the grocery store, but I really didn't want to fight crowds. I might do that later on tonight. I don't know, but if anything more interesting happens, I'll film and let you know. And uh, this is turning into a video. I didn't think I was gonna make a video out of all these clips, but um, this is turning into a, a catch up with me, I guess. I watch these kinds of videos all the time. Uh, Cloud Surfing Andy, one of my favorite YouTubers, she periodically does like a week vlog, just what she does in the week, and I just eat it up. She doesn't often do anything dramatic, but it's just her, and I just like her so much, I I watch. Um, so I guess this is one of those videos. I hope she's watching. Um, I will talk to you guys later on. It is 9.19 in the evening, and I made brownies. Guess what I'm having for dinner? Mm-hmm. Brownies. Good morning, guys. Hi. So it is about 11.43 in the morning. I did not wake up in time for an early morning 7 a.m. meeting. Actually, I did wake up, but I went right back to bed after giving the cats their treats. I was just not, <laughs> just not feeling like it. So I decided I'm going to come to a noon meeting. There is a, um, a meeting house called TIE, T-I-E. I don't know what that stands for. 
uh, but I've had to drive through parts of Las Vegas that you do not want to break down in uh, that are pretty rough, uh, pretty, 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 pretty rough. Um, if you remember months ago, I decided to walk home from um, the Fremont Street experience and I walked through a neighborhood that was really quite uh, scary and uh, it's actually scarier during the daytime because you can see everything. It's bad. It's bad. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But uh, I am, and it's funny, it's a stone's throw, stone's throw from Circa, which is like the big downtown area. So it's so crazy how close you can go from like absolute, absolute utter poverty and everything that comes with it. And then a stone's throw over there. And I mean, literally, it's like two blocks. You can go to true luxury. Uh, so crazy here in Las Vegas. All right, I'm going to stop in 7-Eleven real quick and get something cold to drink with some caffeine in it uh, and then go to the meeting. We'll see what happens because this meeting will either be amazing or absolutely terrifying. <laughs> but that could be good, too. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Ugh. Hey there. I went with water instead, no caffeine, but it was buy one, get one free. And there's always somebody on a street corner who looks like they're gonna drop in a second. So it's nice to be able to hand them a bottle of water. This poor lady in the <clears throat> 7-Eleven, young lady, very pregnant. Um, she's trying to pay the balance of her amount, 270 something, but her car won't, whatever. And, I'm standing there for a bit, and uh, I said, "Hey, can I can I pay the balance of that with my card?" I mean, because I had my card out, and she was struggling a bit, and I wanted to go. <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, sure, you can pay it." I'm like, "Here, zoom." Now I did it partially because it was the nice thing to do, but also because I was getting impatient, and I'm just faster in paying it. So for two dollars. <laughs> I'm not a saint. I just want to get out of there, you know? You've been there before, haven't you? Um, all right, so let's find this meeting and I will see you uh, later. Whoop. Hey guys, how are you? So it's 108. I just left that meeting. Uh, that was a very real, raw meeting of recovery. It was uh, probably what I needed to hear. Very, very raw. There's a lot of people in that room that are suffering right now. And um, the hard part, especially you're suffering and don't know you're suffering because you're so used to pain. Um, it's, it's, the meeting was really raw. There was a lot of suffering there tonight. Uh, but uh, what I was reminded of is that my uh, misery can be refunded at any time. That's a saying that you'll hear once in a while. Um, and uh, that means if I don't do the work, I can slip back into what my life used to be like before I got sober. And I heard some examples of that today. Some people who did not do the work, it did not continue to do the work to stay sober, they slipped and, you know, they're in a halfway house, you know, and I, you know, that, that could be me. That could be me if I don't do the work. So uh, I was really woken up by today's meeting. I need to... Uh, do more to stay sober. Um, I'm coasting on my recovery and that is a very, it's not something I really want to say and it's, it, it feels shameful. Uh, also, this outfit is so cute. I love this shirt. I think it's a, one of my favorite shirts ever. I've lost a little weight so it actually fits better. I'm wearing a pair of navy shorts and a pair of blue suede loafers that I, they're gorgeous. I've shown them to you when I was in Nashville uh, not long ago. Goodwill, goodwill, goodwill. And um, a number of people pointed out my outfit. It was glaring. It's cute. It's so cute. I really feel cute in this. But it was so glaring, glaringly not appropriate <laughs> for that meeting. Um, because I'd say nine out of ten people in that room were housing challenged. Am I making any sense? I feel like I'm rambling. Um, 
So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna hit the grocery store. I bought some stuff yesterday, but I have a trip starting Thursday. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back to work. Um, I've, I've taken this time off. It feels like too much time on my hands uh, and it's passed like this. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to going back to work. I have a trip that starts Thursday. My show time is like 2.50 in the afternoon. So uh, yep, I think I might go grocery shopping, buy some stuff to prepare for that. And the rest of the day, I have no plans. Uh, it is 107, so it feels like it's cooling off a little bit. Um, I might hit a thrift store. I might hit a good a Goodwill or something and to look for something to um, resell. So if I do anything interesting, I'll, I'll film it and show you. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. I walk in the door and there's Eleanor. And then look at Buddy. Look at him. Look at him. He is so funny. That's my spot, Buddy. Hi, Eleanor. <laughs> You're so soft and fluffy. Yeah. So pretty. She reminds me of the Bride of Frankenstein with the little white lightning bolts on the side of her head. Yeah. Good girl. You're such a good girl. I'm a pretty girl. Yes, you are. Hi, buddy. Hi, handsome. We're laying down, taking a little nap. And he is lying in the crook of my arm. Like a good little boy. <laughs> okay. You're so good. Oh, my goodness. I have just been intimate with Barry White. He just had his way with me through the speakers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, if you're too young to remember or know who Barry White is, you're missing something in your life. Uh, he, oh, oh, my God, his voice. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I am at the airport. I am clearly not going to work. That's tomorrow. Uh, but I do know that I have a package waiting for me. Uh, one of my subscribers, I'm stalking a Southwest flight attendant and a pilot. Um, I'm waiting for them to give you a direction where they might be parked so I can stalk them. Um, I know that a subscriber sent me a package that I think has some cat treats inside, which would be wonderful. Um, oh, I think someone else might get them before I do. Oh, well. Um, and I know that I have an automatic shipment of said cat treats that should be there as well. Oh, oh my God, I found a parking spot right here. An amazing parking spot. Let's see if I can get into it. I'm not good at parallel parking. I can't do it while you're watching now. That was amazing. I just went whoosh right in there. The car behind me did, was very thoughtful and left plenty of space uh, behind it. <laughs> I got you. That white truck was also stalking for a parking spot, but I won. I'm so excited. All right. Uh, so I need to get some um, stuff at the post office box. And then I'm thinking of hitting Costco. <gasps> I know. A little risky at 2.30 in the afternoon. So we'll see what happens. What is that? That is a glass bottle sitting in the middle of... Where are my flashers? of the road. Ugh! Can't do that. Well, I'm not someone driving over a bottle in the employee parking area. That would have been bad. Alright, so, um, oh, flasher's off. You know how long it took me to find my flasher button? Um, what was I going to tell you? I had five packages at the P.O. box. One of them 
right here next to me uh, was sent out. I had to double check everything. I filled out the, um, the address perfectly correct according to what uh, eBay gave me and um, it was undeliverable, the wrong uh, zip code. So if you are a subscriber of mine and you purchased two Kettle One Bloody Mary glasses for $12, um, I have them. <laughs> Read your email. Um, all right, so yeah, all right, um, that's done. It is 3.02. I'm probably making a horrible mistake going into Costco, but um, there's some stuff I would like for my trip and beyond, and I will have to see you guys later. I have to open the door to do this. Super excited. So Cars Water Crackers, there are six boxes inside here um, for like $6, so yummy. Welch's Fruit Snacks, 90 packs for $9. Um, I used to break open a kid's snack pack just for these. Uh, 40 packs, like 40 of these little mini packs at the grocery store is like $9. So, doing those. Some pot stickers. Those are delicious. Some pomegranate juice. That's like 5 bucks. And I have some pre-made uh, broccoli and cheddar chicken breasts in there. Two of them for like $7. So, that'll be great for meal prepping to take with me. Not that it's meal prepping when I take it out of a box, but uh, I'm taking, <laughs> taking it with me on a trip for, for food. And I've been here about mm, 10 minutes, so I've done some fair shopping. I usually don't buy much more than this, but we'll see what else I find. Peanut butter, Ugh. two 48 ounce things for 10 bucks. Thank you. Ugh. And something else that I really like. It's called Better Than Bullion. It's basically, Bully, chicken bouillon, but like in a paste, it's so good. And this is a huge jar, 21 ounces for $8.99. That is a fantastic deal and it's something I use all the time, so I'll get it out. And if you've been to Costco, you know if you know. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, I was blocking Buddy's path. He usually has full access to the area by the window, but hey there, how are you? Good afternoon. So I just got back from Costco. I bought a couple other things, nothing of consequence. But um, one of the packages I got at the post office was this enormous box from Leah, Leah G in Kingsport, Tennessee. I don't know what's in here, but it's very heavy. And Leah spent, I, I'm almost afraid to tell you how much she spent for shipping on this, it was 50 bucks. $52. So um, whatever is in here is like gold anyway. But um, when you're spending $50 on shipping, it's too much to send to me. I already feel guilty, <laughs> but also grateful. Uh, so I'm very, very thoughtful, thankful for whatever's in here, but it's already too much. So next time, please, please, please don't do this. Um, let me open this up because I'm like, I feel like a kid on Christmas morning. I'll be right back one sec. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right. So Leah, I hope you are independently wealthy because otherwise I'm going to feel really, really bad. I am celebrating a little bit inside my body here because this is such a relief. <laughs> but if this is completely what I think it is, I'm not going to have to buy cat treats for a while. I spend hundreds <laughs> I swear I must spend $150 or more a month on, maybe $200 on cat treats and cat food and cat litter. I don't even know how to respond to this. I, I don't even really know how to respond to this. So, you know, I give my cats these treats. They're called uh, delectable squeeze ups uh, by hearts. So I give them those treats and that's what we have like a few times a day, but once a day, I give them something as an extra tree, as a meal replacement, and they're called bisques. And I don't know if Leah knew this, but um, uh, there, so there's, there's some bisques. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13. 13 boxes of these treats. And there are 12 each inside. I give them one of these um, each once a day. Uh, and sometimes twice a day if I am not uh, able to give them the regular treats that I give them. But these are something I buy for myself almost because it's like an extra, extra special thing for the cats. They love them. Um, but I buy myself one, maybe two boxes at a time because and because they're kind of expensive. Now, Leah, I don't even know really how to respond to this. I do have your address from your box, so you know there's a thank you card coming, but um, this, <laughs> this is overwhelming. This is overwhelming. Um, there's chicken and there is a uh, uh, non-seafood recipe, which is interesting. I, most of them are ch uh, chicken and cheese. And then there's one that has something like duck in it. They're going to be spoiled beyond words. I cannot thank you enough because this is going to be the equal. This has got to be equal to a payment for my air conditioner ex is what it is. So I am, uh, I think you mentioned you're going to send me a box. I was kind of expecting this, not this. I am overwhelmed. Um, I don't know what else to say. Oh my gosh, really? This is too much. This is too much. Now, I am so grateful. I love it. I love it. I am so moved. It's a lot. I feel so grateful, but that's also a lot. So, oh my gosh. Um, don't do this again. I will just feel so guilty. I feel guilty for being so happy about this box. Um, little little um, parable. I'm not sure if this is a parable or a short story. But uh, when I was a little boy, if, when I was a little boy, if I went to a friend's house, which was rare because I didn't have a lot of friends even back as a kid. But if I were to go into a friend's house and the mom would say, hey, Stephen, do you want a glass of water or a glass of lemonade or something? It's 110 degrees and... Would you like something to drink? I'd say, no, thank you. Because <laughs> I would feel awkward just accepting anything from anybody. It was always, I was always in a situation as a kid of needing something. That when someone offered something without charity, just a gesture of kindness, I was so out of place and uncomfortable and unprepared for this generosity of a glass of water that I would say, no, thank you. So... There's a pair. I'm not sure if it's a parable or not, but I'm feeling so <laughs> overwhelmed by this gift of generosity. I did not expect this box. Oh, my God. Uh, to those of you who are sitting here going, Stephen, Art, you've been talking for four minutes about this box of treats. I'm sorry, but I'm so overwhelmed. Um, I'm going to let you guys go for a few minutes. I'm going to give the cats a little treat, a little late afternoon bite. Um, oh my gosh. And then I have to go to the post office because the package uh, I received of those uh, that was returned to me of those two glasses, I wrote the wrong address down. So I have to repack it and send it out um, after I give the cats their treats. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. All right. I'm going to let you go only because most of you are sitting there going patiently. Steve, when are you going to stop talking about those treats? I will talk to you guys later. This video is going to come to an end sometime soon because I have my work trip tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. I am so bamboozled right now. All right. See you soon. Oh, my gosh. Isn't this pretty? When I left Florida, I almost mourned the, the, the sky in Florida. I missed the, the cloudscapes over the ocean. Uh, and here, while I'm just driving along the, you know, the road here, and I've got Las Vegas spread around me, in my point of view, um, the, the mountains back there look like torn pieces of paper, very poetic, with these clouds above, just, just gorgeous. So sometimes I miss bits and pieces of the natural world in the, uh, the south southeast. Uh, like Florida, but I'll tell you that the desert has its own beauty here. 
So here's the, the post office. I'm gonna swing over and uh, I'll just see you guys later. So I just dropped off that package at the post office. Um, I didn't put the complete street number down. I'm a moron. Uh, I thought I double checked everything. So I just dropped it off at the post office and leaving, uh, there was this woman who was filming planes taking off from the um, post office parking area. And I let her know about the little strip down by the airport right next to the fence that's designed to let people just park over there and watch planes take off and land. Uh, so for plane watchers or plane spotters, you can do that here in Las Vegas, right right where they take off and land. It's so fun. Uh, but um, we started chatting, you know, me, and uh, we started talking about being a flight attendant. And she's like, oh, really? It's always been on my bucket list to become a flight attendant. And I said, well, we're hiring. I mean, everyone's pretty much hiring right now. She goes, no, I'm 60. I'm too old. I'm like, oh, my God. No, you're not. Um, so I, I told her to, this guy is so pretty. Um, I told her to um, look for me on YouTube, look for my older videos, my like my first videos from my first, like my first year where I gave really some good information about becoming a flight attendant. A handful of people have told me I've helped them <laughs> on their road to becoming a flight attendant. And um, so I told her, you know, look for me, feel free to drop, you know, drop me an email if you have any questions and or leave a comment and I'll do what I can to help. But uh, yeah, it was really nice. So I'm gonna let you guys go because this video has got to be super duper long and crazy. Um, I don't think I've done a video like this ever where I just kind of followed you followed me along all week for my everyday life. I'm not sure if I've ever done this. It's probably the equivalent of a week of Vlogmas. Uh, but I'm going to probably hit a meeting. There's a 7 p.m. meeting uh, nearby. So I think I might check that out and then go home and make some dinner and uh, go to work. So I will see you next time uh, in my next video. All right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you again, Leah, for my, for my box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and um, I will talk to you guys later. All right. Bye. Fly safe.